families as we appreciate this ministry uh, very much. Matthew 21, again, our title this morning, carrying our theme of the year, we're calling it The Authentic Jesus. Say that with me. The Authentic Jesus. Now, Matthew chapter 21 is a Palm Sunday account, and I'm going to read the 17 verses, and I'm going to show you two different scenes, and as I read through this, I want you to see these two scenes that are connected um, in this passage. Beginning at verse 1, when they came to Bethpage near Jerusalem, Jesus sent two disciples saying, go into the village and you'll find a donkey and a colt tied together. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone asks, you tell them the Lord has need of them. Then they did that and gladly gave it to them. They this, Jesus said, is to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, and he's quoting Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, saying, Behold, thy king comes, having salvation, meek and riding upon a colt. The disciples did as Jesus commanded, and then they put their clothes on them, and he sat upon the colt. A very great multitude of people took their garments and cut down palm branches, spreading them along the road and waving them. The multitudes cried, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The city was moved or there was buzzing saying, who is this? The multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus then went into the temple of God as we transition to the second scene. And he drove out those that were selling and buying and he overturned the tables of the money changers. He said, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. And when the chief priests saw the wonderful things that he did and the children shouting Hosanna. So notice the scenes are linked because in the streets the crowds were crying Hosanna. In the temple the children are crying Hosanna and shouting Hosanna and praise. They were angry, and Jesus said to those who were angry at the children shouting Hosanna, out of the mouth of children and infants, you have perfected praise. A little boy went to, was sick on Palm Sunday and stayed home with his mother. His father came home from church, and he was holding a palm branch. So the curious little boy asked his father, why do you have a palm branch? To which the father tried to explain that on the time that Jesus came into town, people were waving their palm branches. So at church, they gave us a palm branch. The little boy shook his head and he said, sure. The one Sunday I miss and Jesus shows up. <laughs> now I want you to know that Jesus is here today on this Palm Sunday. And my prayer is that he would reveal himself to us and he would touch each one of our lives in a powerful and personal way. How many could use a touch from Jesus today? I think we all could. And if we will see him for who he is and allow him to minister to our life, he wants to show up in our hearts and in our lives today. Now, here's today's big idea. You know, Palm Sunday is important. I know it doesn't get the attention that Good Friday and Easter do, and rightfully so. We know that the death and the cross and the resurrection of Jesus is the greatest events in history, and it's a foundation of our faith in every way. But Palm Sunday is important because it kicks off this Holy Week, and it is important for this reason. Palm Sunday gives us a true picture of the authentic Jesus. Let me say that again. Palm Sunday, the purpose of Palm Sunday, why it's so important to us, is it gives us a true picture of the authentic Jesus. It gives us a true picture of who Jesus is and why Jesus came. Who Jesus really is and truly is and why Jesus really came. How many know what we need today and what our world needs today is a real revelation of who Jesus is and why Jesus came to this earth. Now, in this passage that we read, there are two separate accounts. Now, they seem to be in contrast. 
They don't seem to connect, but I read them and I showed you the connection between the Hosanna in the streets and the Hosanna in the temple. And we've connected these two thoughts because there's this first image of Jesus, him entering and riding on a colt into Jerusalem. But then we have this second image of Jesus, and he's entering the temple and he's turning over tables. Two pictures or images of Jesus in these two events, and I submit to you this morning that these two events and these two images give us a true picture of the authentic Jesus. You've got to have both images of Jesus, him entering the temple in, in, and turning over tables and him riding into Jerusalem on a colt. Both of these images together give us a true picture of the authentic Jesus. And that's what we need today is a revelation of who Jesus really is and why Jesus really came. Now, I'm going to show you a clip from a movie. Now, I'm going to put a disclaimer in here. I'm not endorsing the movie. But I'm showing you this clip because it gives us the wrong picture of who Jesus really is and the wrong picture of why Jesus really came. And so it's a clip from the movie Talladega Nights. Now, some of you are already cringing on me here. Anybody know what this movie? All right, some of you know what I mean. In it, you see Ricky Bobby, who is played by Will Ferrell, and he's going to do a prayer around the dinner table with his family. And in this, I want you to see the wrong image, the wrong picture of who Jesus is and why he really came. Watch this clip a moment. Dear Lord, baby Jesus, or as our brothers to the south call you, Jesus, we thank you so much for this bountiful harvest of Domino's, KFC, and the always delicious Taco Bell. I just want to take time to say thank you for my family, my two beautiful, beautiful, handsome, striking sons, Walker and Texas Ranger, or TR as we call them, and of course my red-hot smoking wife, Carly, who is a stone-cold fox. I also want to thank you for my best friend and teammate, Cal Naughton Jr., who's got my back no matter what. Shake and bake. Dear Lord Baby Jesus, we also thank you for my wife's father, Chip. We hope that you can use your baby Jesus powers to heal him and his horrible leg. And it smells terrible, and our dogs are always mm. bothering with it. Mm. Dear tiny infant Jesus. Hey, we... um, you know, sweetie, Jesus did grow up. You don't always have to call him baby. It's a bit odd and off-putting to pray to a baby. Well, look, I like the Christmas Jesus best, and I'm saying grace. When you say grace, you can say it to grown-up Jesus or teenage Jesus or bearded Jesus or whoever you want. You know what I want? I want you to do this grace good. So that God will let us win tomorrow. Now, how many know that's the picture of Jesus? You see, according to Ricky Bobby in this clip, Jesus is only the sweet baby Christmas version of Jesus. And Jesus only came to help him and his family win in life. How many know there are a lot of people who have that wrong image of Jesus? That Jesus is just a sweet, cuddly little baby in Christmas. And he's only here to do what I want and to help me win and help me get ahead and help me do good. How many know that's the wrong image of Jesus? That's not the authentic Jesus. I submit to you this morning that the authentic Jesus is not the sweet baby Christmas version of Jesus. It's the Palm Sunday version of Jesus where he rides into Jerusalem on a colt and he goes into the temple and turns over tables. That's the authentic Jesus. That's the Jesus we need to know. That's the Jesus we need a revelation for. That's the Jesus we need to experience. That's the Jesus this world needs. That's the Jesus that's going to change our life and change the world. That's the authentic Jesus. And so this morning, I want to look at these two scenes, and I want to link them together, and I want to show you these two scenes as we get a glimpse of a true picture of the authentic Jesus. Scene one, I'm calling the revelation of the authentic Jesus. The revelation of the authentic Jesus. The first 11 verses tell us who Jesus really is. Now, 
I've been preaching Palm Sundays for 35 plus years. I've read this passage hundreds and hundreds of times. And I saw something this past week that I've never seen before, and I want to show it to you. And I want you to see something very important, because in these 11 verses, we get a true picture of the revelation of who Jesus really is. Follow with me. Here's what happens. Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Jerusalem. They stop in the outskirts town called Bethpage. Now, in Bethpage, they stop, and Jesus tells two of his disciples to go into the little village of Bethpage and that they would find a donkey and a colt tied together. He tells them to go there, loose them, and to bring him to him. Now, in verse 3, we get the first revelation of who Jesus really is. Jesus says, if anybody asks, because, I mean, it looks like they're stealing a colt and a donkey. He says, if anybody asks you why you're taking these animals, you tell them, verse 4, you tell them the Lord. Come on, say the Lord. He said, the Lord has need of them, and when you tell them the Lord needs them, they'll give those animals to you. Wow. The first revelation of who Jesus really is, is he is the Lord. Come on, say that. Jesus is Lord. Listen, that means he owns it all. How many know the animal kingdom, that cult was not broken, that cult that he sat on, when he sat on it, the cult knew, yes, sir, you're the Lord. When people would ask, why are you taking that cult? The Lord has need. Yes, sir, you can have it. You're the Lord. And I submit to you today that the first revelation of who Jesus is, the authentic Jesus that we need to see, is the Lord. And I submit to you, He's not just the Lord, He is the Lord of all lords. Come on, let's give Him praise. Now continue in the story, and I want to show you the second thing. And I want you to see, I've never seen these three things linked together. The second thing, what happens is, is so the disciples go in, they see the donkey, the they untie it, they bring it to Jesus. Jesus turns to the other disciples and he says this, this is being done to fulfill what was written by the prophet. Now he's quoting Zechariah hundreds of years ago, Zechariah 19, 9 verse 9, and the prophet said this, behold thy king, come on, say king. Thy king will come humbly, bringing salvation, riding on a colt. I submit to you today that the revelation of the authentic Jesus is that he is Lord. The Lord of Lords. But I also submit to you today he is the king. He's the one who reigns and rules over all things. It's not sweet baby Jesus in a manger, though he came gift wrapped. How many know he's the Lord? How many know he's the king? Continue on in the passage. Notice this. Then they put their garments on the colt. They sit Jesus on the colt. They ride into Jerusalem. People are laying their garments on the roadside. People are taking palm branches off the tree, and they're waving them, and they're shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And the whole city, the Bible says, is buzzing. And a few people are asking in the crowd, who is this? And in the crowd and in the multitude, they say this. This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. Oh, come on. The third revelation of who Jesus is, is he's the prophet above all prophets. He is Lord. Come on, say Lord. He's the Lord of lords. Say King. He's the king of kings, and he is the prophet. Say prophet. He is the spokesperson from God above all others. He is Lord. He is king. He is prophet. That is a revelation, and that is the image in the picture of Jesus riding into Jerusalem that tells us this is the authentic Jesus, and that's the Jesus we need to know today. That's the Jesus that this world needs to know. That's the authentic Jesus that can change our life and can change the world. The authentic Jesus is Lord. 
The authentic Jesus is king. The authentic Jesus is the prophet, the spokesperson above all for God. You know, 2 Corinthians 13, 1 tells us that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the word or truth is established. Well, Jesus, out of his own mouth, said, the Lord hath need of it. The prophet, hundreds of years ago, spoke and said, thy king will come riding on a colt. And the crowd and the multitude, even though they didn't know what they were saying, said the prophet who's come from God and from Nazareth. Out of the mouth of those three witnesses, out of the mouth of those, the testimony of those three groups of people, it was declared that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King. Jesus, I never saw that in all the years. And linking those three titles and those three descriptions of who Jesus is. And I submit to you today, that is the authentic Jesus. How many know back in biblical days, just as today, there are all kinds of images of Jesus? All kinds of concepts. How many know Ricky Bobby isn't the only one who had the wrong picture of Jesus? If I would go on the street today and I'd ask people, who's Jesus? Who is Jesus? How many know we get all kinds of opinions? Maybe if I went around the room today and I asked you, who's Jesus? Would we say, he's, li- he's my Lord. He's my King. He's my prophet. He speaks for God for my life only. Oh, come on. You see, one day in Matthew chapter 16, just a little bit earlier, Jesus is with his disciples. And he says to them, who do people say that I am? What's the word on the street? And what happens is one of the disciples said, Lord, some people think you're a good man like John the Baptist. Others said you're like a prophet like Jeremiah or Isaiah. And then Peter, not on his own, but by revelation. What do we need today? We need a revelation from God. Not just our own concept, not just our own ideas, not just the public's view of Jesus, not what society says about Jesus. We need a revelation from God about who Jesus really is. And by revelation from God, Peter said, Thou art the Christ. You are the son of the living God. In other words, Peter by revelation said, you are the anointed one. You are the true Messiah. You are the true son of God. You are the true savior who's come into the world. And today we need to see Jesus and have a revelation of him as Lord, as king, as prophet, as the Messiah, as the savior who's come into the world. That's the authentic Jesus. Let me ask you today. Who do we say Jesus is? That's really the question. Those of you that are watching online, if you're in the building this morning, or somebody may be watching this later on, who do you say Jesus is? What's your concept of him? What's your idea? Listen, our revelation will determine our salvation. Let me say that again. Our revelation of who Jesus is will determine our experience of salvation with him. If he's just the Christmas Jesus, or the version of Jesus we like best. But if he's not the Jesus who rode in to Jerusalem on a colt as the Lord, the King, and the prophet, if he's not the one who owns it all, if he's not the one who reigns over our life, if he's not the prophet who speaks for our life, then he's not Lord at all. He's not King at all in our life. He's not prophet at all. And we need a revelation of the authentic Jesus. You know what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 10? One day every knee is going to bow. Every tongue, every human being who ever existed and will exist on this earth or in this world, one day every one of them will say out of their mouth, Jesus is Lord, King and prophet to the glory of God. And here's the thing. Either we do it now by choice, or we do it then by force. But either way, every person is going to come to that revelation one day. What is our mouth saying? 
What are we declaring with our mouth in our life? What do we say? Are we going to join the mouth of Jesus who called himself Lord, the mouth of the prophet who declared him as king, the mouth of the crowd who called him the prophet? Are we going to join our voice and our mouth with those mouths and declare the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord? Jesus Christ is king. Jesus Christ is the prophet, the spokesman of God who speaks for my life. If that's not our revelation, then we're missing out on the authentic Jesus. The second scene, that's scene one, Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a colt, the revelation of Jesus as prophet, king, and Lord. That's who Jesus really is. Scene two tells us why Jesus really came. Now I'm calling scene two, verses 12 to 17, I'm calling it the restoration of the authentic Jesus. You see, the first 11 verses is the revelation of Jesus, prophet, king, and Lord. This is the restoration of Jesus. The revelation is who he is. The restoration is why he came. Why did Jesus really come? Now notice in scene one, he rode humbly on a colt into Jerusalem as the king. But notice in scene two, he comes in forcibly into the temple And he overturns tables and throws out the money changers who were taking advantage of the people. How many know both images are needed for the authentic Jesus? Not just the image of him riding into Jerusalem, though that is powerful. Lord, King, and Prophet. How many know the second image of him going into the temple and overturning tables and throwing out money changers is also the other side of the authentic Jesus. Both give us that picture of who Jesus really is. And I want you to notice what happens here. He comes into the temple, the first thing, think about it. Here he is riding on this colt, they're waving palm branches, they're calling Hosanna, And the first thing he does when he gets into Jerusalem, he goes into the temple. Well, I think it makes sense because isn't that God's house? Isn't that his house? So what's the first thing that the prophet, the king, and the Lord does is he goes into his house and restores the temple. He restores the temple to make it truly the house of God. He comes in and he takes over and he says, this is my house. I'm the Lord. I'm the king. I'm the prophet. I'm the one who says what happens here. And I've come to restore my house to be the house of God. That's the authentic Jesus. Now he came, and I want you to notice in these verses, 11 to 17, there are four things Jesus came to restore. First of all, Jesus came into the temple to restore to the temple to make it a house of purity. Say purity. Purity. What was the first thing Jesus did? He went in and he cleaned house. (laughs) So this is my house. You've made it a den of thieves. You've turned it into whatever it is you've turned it into. And I'm here to put things in the right order and to clean house. And the Bible says that he overturned tables and he threw out the money changers. Now, let me explain that a moment, just give you the cultural background of the money changers. You see, the people were were living under Roman rule, so when they received wages, they would receive Roman coins. But when they went to the temple, the law taught, that they had to bring shekels or Jewish coins to the temple to pay their tithe or to give offering to the Lord. And so what happened is they needed a money changer. They needed someone who would exchange the Roman coins into Jewish coins so that they could go to the temple. But what happened was, is the money changers, instead of doing that in the courtyard where business was done, they decided to bring that into the temple. And in the outer court, they set up shop and set up a kiosk there to to change the money 
so that they can change it from Roman coins to Jewish coins so the people could give their offerings to the Lord. And what they were doing is they were charging a fee or a tax or a surcharge on top of the normal amount because it was a convenient in the temple. And they were cheating people and taking advantage of people and stealing money from people. And Jesus said, not in my house. Not in my house. I'm the Lord. I'm the king. I'm the prophet. I get to say what, and you guys are out of here. And he cleaned house, and he made it a house of purity. And he said, my house is going to be a house of purity. The second thing Jesus came to restore is he came into the temple to restore and to make his house a house of prayer. Say prayer. First, a house of purity, but secondly, he came to make it a house of prayer. In verse, 14, uh, verse 13, he said, my house, and he's quoting Isaiah 56, 7, and he says, my house will be called. It is written back in Isaiah, my house will be called a house of prayer. I mean, no, Jesus not only wants to restore purity to his house, he wants to, he wants to restore the altar to his house. He wants God's people to know how to pray and to have relationship with him and talk to him and, and, and meet with him and pray to him and to know him in a personal way. He came to restore his house to a house of purity and a house of prayer. Thirdly, in verse 14, Jesus came to restore to the temple and make it a house of power. Say power. A house of purity, a house of prayer, and a house of power. It says the, in verse 14, the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. How many know Jesus wants to restore power and healing and the miraculous to his church, to his people, and to his house? How many know he wants his house to be a house of purity and righteousness? He wants his house to be a house of prayer and relationship with God on an altar. He wants his house to be a house of power where signs, wonders, and miracle and the power of the Holy Spirit is at work. He wants to restore that to the temple and to the house of God. The fourth thing in verse 15 and 16, Jesus came to restore the temple to be a house of praise. Say praise. A house of purity, a house of prayer, a house of power, and a house of praise. What happened was in the temple, the children were mimicking what the people were saying in the streets. The people in the streets were shouting Hosanna, and so in the church, the kids were saying, shouting Hosanna. And the religious people said, they need to calm down. They need to be quiet. This is a library. I mean, this is a church. They need to be quiet. And Jesus said, uh-uh, not in my house. My house is a house of praise. Out of the mouth of children and infants, I'm perfecting praise. I'm making praise. Out of the mouth of infants and children, I want my house to be a house of praise. Listen, Jesus not only wants to restore his house to be a house of purity and righteousness, he not only wants to restore his house to be a house of, of prayer where we have an altar, where we meet with God. God only does God want his house to be a house of power where there's miracles and the moving of the Holy Spirit. He wants his house to be a house of praise where people lift their voices and shout out of their spirits that Jesus Christ is Lord and where people will shout and people will have a good time and people will understand that Jesus Christ is who he is and if we can't if we see what they do we see what they do at, at football games and baseball games and how they cheer and they shout we're the crazy ones we need to learn how to get our shout back and our praise back and the church needs to restore the fact that we are here to praise the Lord let everything that has breath praise the Lord praise him in the morning praise him in the noontime praise him in the evening and it, there, his praise shall continually be in my mouth Jesus' house. He's the Lord. He's the king. And he's the prophet, the spokesman from God, and says, I want my house to be a house of purity, a house of prayer, a house of praise, and a house of power. How many know that's what Jesus wants for your life and my life? That's what he wants for your home and my home. We know that's what he wants for this church and every church around the world that will acknowledge him as Lord and King. You know what the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 3? 
And also in 2 Corinthians 6, two times, Paul tells the church of Corinth, know ye not that your life is a temple, oh, come on, is the temple of God. Your life is the temple of the Holy Spirit. If my life is the temple of the Holy Spirit and your life is the temple of the Holy Spirit and your house is the house of God and my house is the house, if this church and every church in the, in the world is a house of God, then listen, how many know he wants his house to be a house of purity, his house of prayer, a house of power, and a house of praise? We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you this question. If Jesus came into your life today, what would he throw out or overturn? Oh, wow. I thought about that all week in my life. If Jesus came into my life and said, it's time to turn this over and throw this out. Let me ask you this. If Jesus came into your home. Oh boy. He came into my home and your home. And he said, I want you to clean this out and I want you to change this and I want you to overturn that. What would he do? What would he say? If Jesus would come into this church or any church around the world, what would he overturn? What would he clean out? He's the Lord. He's the king. He's the prophet. He has the say over his house. Out of the mouth of babes. Did you hear my little granddaughter? See, she was praising. You, you, you may think she's just making baby sounds. Uh-uh. That's praise. Come on. All right, here we got to wrap this up. Here's the bottom line. The authentic Jesus is the authentic Savior who came to bring authentic salvation. Who is he really? Who really is Jesus? He's the authentic Savior who carries the title Lord, King, and Prophet. Why did Jesus come? He came to bring authentic salvation. What is really authentic salvation? Is when my house and your house and our lives are houses of purity, prayer, power, and praise. That's what he wants for me and you. That's why Jesus came. That's who Jesus is. Now, what links these two accounts. I told you. And isn't it funny? Jesus riding on a colt humbly into Jerusalem and then Jesus throwing over tables. <laughs> you see these two things and yet they're linked. What links them? What, how do I know that they all happened at the same time at Palm Sunday? Because of the one word, Hosanna. In the streets, what was the crowd shouting? Come on, say it. Hosanna! What were in the temple? What were the children saying? Hosanna! It links them together. And you know what the word Hosanna means? It means, oh, save. It means, save now. Rescue me now. Save me now, Lord. Come on. We want Jesus to make us his house. We want Jesus to purify our life and Give us a, an altar to build a relationship with him. We want to see power and the Spirit of God and miracles happen in our life. We want, we want to become people of praise. Hosanna. Save me. Rescue me. Help me. Change me. You see, the authentic Jesus came to bring authentic, to be the authentic Savior and to bring authentic salvation. Bow your head with me. Close.